What's that sound I hear? That's not my music. What's up with that? You know what, folks? Hit my music. Yes. Fucking is I, the one, the only. I am a hobo Tom. And I'm here to give my predictions about WrestleMania. And as you can tell, it's a pirate theme WrestleMania. Because as every pirate knows, there's no such thing as too much rum. Even if it's gingerbread rum, yes, there is such a thing. See, gingerbread rum. And because it's going to be Cinco de Mayo soon, there is no such thing as too much tequila. Well, some people would beg to differ. But with that being said, it's time to give my WrestleMania predictions. Because I have no idea how much of WrestleMania I can actually cover. Mainly because I have to work. Oh, I have to work tomorrow until 9.30 at night. So I'll get home at 10. So I'll probably miss half of it. Probably more so because I have to cook dinner too. It's 10. It's supposed to start at 8. Jeez, it should last till 10. Oh, wait a second. It's supposed to start at 8. I'll get home uh, 9 30, probably closer to 10. 10 then till midnight. I mean, that's four hours. Seven matches, four hours. Uh, we'll see what happens. We'll see how much I can cover. On Sunday, I'll be able to cover a little bit more. So I should be home by 9. Should be over by 11. So we'll see. Again, all of the ROM. Yes. And I actually have more, which is scary. This, I think, was bought on a whim. It was cheap. This is for the, to appease the boat. And then this one, this is for Cinco de Mayo coming up, even though it's tequila. So... Let's get right to my WrestleMania predictions. And of course, as always, it's still a Red Wine Friday. And oh my goodness, that, that fatty, delicious, deliciousness of bacon pizza. Oh, that tasted so good. Second only to just having sandwiches with beef on them. A nice glass of red wine. I think next week is going to be a more proper, yes, a more proper red wine and pizza Friday. I think I have off that day so I can manage my time a little bit better, depending on work. That always screws me up. Um, oh, yeah, very quickly. Next week is going to be kind of a screwy week. I don't think I'm going to get to impact because I have to work that day. I'm, I know I won't be able to get to AEW because I work that day too. Tuesday, I might not, I might not get, so Thursday, I can't get Impact. Tuesday, I may or may not get NXT. It might be that weird week where I do the kind of like the bookends, or I know I do the Monday Night Raw. Again, the Raw after WrestleMania is huge. That's going to be a review because I got to go to the spa that day. Oh, that's going to feel so good. And then Friday is going to be the other bookend where it's going to be the SmackDown after WrestleMania. And we'll see what happens. Because this is going to be an interesting WrestleMania. And I'll start off with day one. I have no idea which... I have a clue about the main events. All the other matches, I have no idea. So don't quote me on anything. Um... I think it's going to start off with the women's tag team turmoil match. You have Lana and Naomi taking on Dana Brooke and Mandy Rose taking on the Ride Squad, taking on Natalia and Tamina. Only because Natalia has been dressing like a slut and Tamina's been winning. I'm going to choose Natalia and Tamina winning that match. So, yeah, that should be interesting. 
And then probably in my match of the night. We'll have Seth Rollins taking on Cesaro. I have Seth Rollins winning. Seth Rollins has been getting beat up by Cesaro. Uh, however, it wouldn't surprise me if Cesaro won. These two, more so Cesaro. Although, ooh, nah, I want to. Maybe I'll. Have, yeah, I want to have a bonus. That's okay. Maybe Kai Sono shows up. Chris Hero shows up. They reunite the kings of wrestling. WWE's not that not that cool though. So again, this is my match tonight. I have Seth Rollins winning. He's been beaten up a lot. Especially by Cesaro. So yep, Seth Rollins wins again in my match of the night. <sighs> and then I had to think of a snooze match. You have Braun Strowman taking on Shane McMahon inside of a steel cage. I have Shane McMahon winning just for one reason. I witness in a steel cage match Braun Strowman chokeslam or throw... Kevin Owens off the top of a steel cage onto a table. Or onto the floor, actually. Kevin Owens won that match. Braun could do something dumb like that. Although you can never figure out Shane McMahon doing something crazy, too. Only because of it. And this said makes probably no sense. Only because of the history. I'll say Shane McMahon wins. Even though traditionally Shane McMahon loses these matches. He still does some... Like his like WrestleMania record's like horrible. He lost to AJ Styles. He lost to The Undertaker. I forget, was that, I forget if that was a WrestleMania or, or a pay-per-view event. But it was some big event. But he did something crazy. Like I know versus The Undertaker, it was when he delivered the elbow through the table. You could actually see the crash pad underneath the table. At least they tried to hide it. Unlike AEW. That was bad. But yeah. Shane McMahon's... I think Shane McMahon's gonna win. Mainly because Braun does something stupid. Stupid! Stupid is a stupid does. I'm not stupid. Uh, I'm not stupid. I know the brains. Which way did he go? Which way did he go? I don't know. We'll see. I still think Shane McMahon's winning. The New Day's going to take on AJ Styles and Omos. I have a funny feeling AJ Styles is going to win that tag team belt. I mean, AJ Styles with Omos. Omos just has to get in there. He's so much bigger, so much, in theory, stronger than both Kofi and New Day. And AJ has all the talent in the universe. Again, we saw a hapless AJ win in a Survivor Series match. So I can't put it past AJ Styles. The New Day don't necessarily need those tag team belts. I mean, it's fun for them to chase. If they could develop more tag teams on Jeffrey of Raw or SmackDown now. Oh yeah, Raw. They're not doing anything with the SmackDown tag team champions, are they? Boo. Boo. I did that today. I missed that because I had to work. But yeah, the New Day is fine chasing the belts. They're, they're okay. AJ Styles and Omos. Great way to push, push Omos. AJ Styles. If he chooses to retire, to retire, he's been... I think he's held every belt. Maybe. I'd have to look, look up in my... I don't, I don't think he's been IC champion. I want to say he's been US title holder... Maybe he just had maybe he just held the big black belt, the WWE Championship, but oh, he did that so good though. So yeah, AJ Styles and Omos wins that match, and then the match I'm going to to sober up during 
It's going to be Bad Bunny and Damien Priest. And the only reason I'm going to sober up is so I can drink more. It's going to be Bad Bunny and Damien Priest versus The Miz and John Morrison. I'm going to snooze through, through this match. Bad Bunny and Damon Priest are going to win. Uh, I swear if they have John Morrison eat the pin. Uh, he's going to leave The Miz, join his wife Ty Valkyrie on NXT, I hope. She is bound for NXT. As Frankie, whoever. Then we have kind of like, I guess the co-main event, Sasha Banks versus Bianca Belair. Bianca Belair is going to take the title of Sasha Banks. My only concern about this match is what does Sasha Banks do to herself that injures her? She's known for that. It's not a given that she's going to do something safe and simple. No, no, no. In big matches, she does something. She oversells and she might give herself a concussion. Who knows? Bianca is also strong enough where... She might not know her strength against Sasha Sasha Banks. I saw Sasha Banks in person. Oh, so so heavenly a booty, but nothing else though. So yeah. And then probably in the main event we have Bobby Lashley taking on Drew McIntyre. This is my stone cold lock. Drew McIntyre wins that belt back. This will, this can this feud can still go on. You still have the Hurt Business. You might have new members. There have been rumors. Naomi is going to join the Hurt Business. Keith Lee might join the Hurt Business. That would be good. Instead of a four-man faction, they go very traditionally to a three-man faction like WWE likes. And that's going to mean that one. So you know what? Let's take a little break. can't believe two nights in Wrestlemania. I mean, no, that's lots for the boat. Is this going to be enough to sustain me for two whole, for two nights of Wrestlemania? I'm just glad I have some red wine. Oh, wait a second. Is this thing still on? Oh, hello, folks. Welcome back for... That's Sunday night, day two of WrestleMania. Of course, predictions. Um, I'm not going to go over every, everything. I just know this has been the longest week of pro wrestling in a while. I don't know if it's just WrestleMania, but this whole week just seemed long to me. But let's talk about some WrestleMania matches. Let's see here. I've, um, my SC main event, I have no idea the order. So don't quote me on the order necessarily. But we have Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler taking on... Who I predict is going to be Natalya and Tamina. Unless something screwy happens. Such as the... I cut it! Coming back. Which would be a bonus... Um, yeah. Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler are going to retain those belts somehow. Then we'll have... Oh, gee, I don't even know the order in these matches. Matt Riddle versus Sheamus. I'll tell you what. This might actually be... My... I don't know. I'm torn on this. I'll say this is my match of the night. My wait, match of the night. Mainly because Sheamus has been has been putting in s such good, strong style, tough guy, 
work. He's, I mean, he's done amazing stuff. Matt Riddle can go hold for hold with anyone. After he gets over the goofy stoner gimmick, Matt Riddle's amazing. If he can get over the Matt Riddle stoner flip-flop thing, Matt Riddle's an amazing pro wrestler. Sheamus is great. He's a veteran. I think they reward Sheamus a little bit. Sheamus gets that U.S. belt, and this feud continues. And then let's see here. So I'm really nervous about this one. Well, yeah. Only because I've seen it before, I might... S I don't know. I don't want to say I'm going to sleep through this match. And I'll sleep through the next... I don't know. You know what? The power of editing. I'll take a cat nap through the women's, mat through the women's tag match. But yeah, um... So we'll have Kevin Owens versus Sami Zayn, or I correct myself, Kevin Steen versus El Generico. If the WWE wanted to do this right, they would have Kevin Steen and El Generico square off in a PWG style match, and this this would blow everyone's mind. However, I do not trust Vince nor Paul Levesque enough to allow them. To have a Kevin Steen El Generico style match. I think. And my prediction is going to be Kevin Owens wins. He gets his win back from when Sami Zayn defeated him. Again when the roles were kind of reversed. Sami Zayn was the face. Kevin Owens was the heel. Now Kevin Owens is the face. Sami Zayn is the heel. Kevin Owens gets that win back. So I think Kevin Owens is going to win that match. Oh, although. Oh. If, if it's. If it's. Anything less from what they delivered in WrestleMania. Um, was it SummerSlam or WrestleMania? It's one of the big shows. It might have been SummerSlam. If it's anything less than that match. Or anything less than one of their PWG matches. Or even Chikara matches. Or, or Ring of Honor matches. I I'll just be flat out disappointed. Then we have Big E taking on Apollo Crews. I think Apollo Crews is going to win. Granted, he, he's held that U.S. He's never held... He held the U.S. belt. But he hasn't held the I.C. belt. Big E is the kind of person who is better chasing the belt than actually holding it, I think. It's much more fun, much more entertaining. Just... <sighs> Apollo Crews, I think, is going to win. And then, probably in the um, pr big production match, we have The Fiend versus Randall Orton. Uh, the Fiend, uh, this is my stone cold lock. For Night Dose. Is that The Fiend's going to win. He's going to defeat Randy Orton. It's going to be a cinematic match. Again, this gives... Bray Wyatt, kind of his mat, his win, gives him the win from WrestleMania 33. I forget which WrestleMania it is. The one in Orlando. Again, when I saw those bugs on the ring, I'm like, whoa, what the hell? They're like, whoa, this is different. I like this. Then they did like two and three times, and by the third time, you're like, okay, we've seen this before. I thought it was cool. I thought it was different. And it did add some specter of the supernatural to it. It did freak out Randy Orton. The crowd's reaction, the first time was really good. I was there, the crowd's reaction was like, whoa, what the hell? We're all staring at each other. The, the third time, it's like, yeah, we kind of got wise to it. So again, that kind of wow factor wore off very quickly. Um, other people said it was terrible. I don't think it was terrible. I just think when you keep on repeating the same thing, even with different images. The first time you're like, whoa. Uh, the third time, not so much. So Randy Orton's going to win that match. Again, that's my Stone Cold Lock. Or, I'm sorry, um, The Fiend's going to win that match. That's my Stone Cold Lock. Asuka versus Rhea Ripley. This is a conundrum. Charlotte's not going to be there. 
Asuka could drop the belt to Rhea Ripley. So Rhea Ripley could actually win the belt. In a really good match. I don't think Rhea Ripley and Asuka ever face each other in NXT. Rhea Ripley came in after Asuka left. So they never really face each other. Asuka has lost that mystique to a degree. Now, and this is going to sound terrible, and I'm going to get, get beat up for saying this, but Asuka on her promos is more comedy than it is serious pro wrestler. In the ring, Asuka's great. Don't, don't, don't get me wrong. Asuka's great in the ring. She's amazing. No one's ready for Asuka in the ring. But her promos lead to a certain goofiness. So I wonder how that's going to translate for this match. I have Rhea Ripley winning. Again, this sets things up for, at least in my opinion, for SummerSlam or whenever Charlotte Flair comes back. And then... Is this my match of the night? No. Oh, yeah. Uh, in the main event, you have Roman Reigns in a triple threat match. Yeah, it's already there. Triple threat, Roman Reigns taking on Edge, taking on Daniel Bryan. <sighs> Daniel Bryan doesn't necessarily... This is, my, this is my thought process. Daniel Bryan doesn't necessarily have to win to continue this feud. If Edge loses... If Roman Reigns pins Edge... Daniel Bryan can say, you never beat me. Edge is still a part-timer. So Edge Edge can have his have his glory moment. The whole crowd can applaud. As long as Edge puts in a great effort, the whole crowd will applaud him. Roman Reigns will get heat. He'll pin Edge. This will set up for Roman Reigns versus Daniel Bryan. But Daniel Bryan kind of wants... See, it's weird because the only full-time person here is Roman Reigns. He's going to keep that title. Roman Reigns retains his belt. It just depends on who eats the pin. Because if Roman Reigns pins Edge, I mean, Edge for the most part's done and can say, yeah, I've done what I wanted to do when I came back to, N to, to WWE. I had my, my WrestleMania moment. I'm okay with this. It also sets up, hey, Daniel Bryan, you lost. You, you cost me this match. So now that's Daniel Bryan versus Edge in a pay-per-view match. It could be Roman Reigns versus Daniel Bryan because Daniel Bryan can say, hey, you never pinned me, buddy. Or if Roman Reigns pins Daniel Bryan. Again, this leads up to a SummerSlam event where somewhere in between Edge says, Daniel Bryan, because you were there, you cost me my championship. And then Edge gets to say, Hey, Roman, you never pinned me. So I think Roman Reigns winning, and that may seem overly analytical, but I think Roman Reigns winning leads to, to better booking down the road. So I think Roman Reigns is going to win. And those are my predictions, or our best guesses. Again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please have your glass of red wine responsibly. Oh, this tastes so good. And if you are going to enjoy the tequila, the rum, or some other stuff, adult beverage, please do some.